Right, so I thought we'd just do a quick update on where we're up to with the workshop. So we've, we've moved in now and we're here. Obviously things aren't set up, but we're actually in the building, which is a starting point. Got a few bits done. The lighting has been sorted. It did have low hanging fluorescence. They were about sort of six foot off the ground because this was an agricultural engineer. So I had milling machines and laves and they have the lighting, you know, nearly directly over the machine. So they've all gone. Um, <clears throat> sorry, and they've been replaced with about a thousand watts of these six foot LED um, sort of Batson lights. And to be honest, they're absolutely fantastic. Really, really good. I mean, we had 28 fluorescent lights near when I moved in, um, combination of five foots and four foots. And they were still wired up while these ones were put in and you flip the switch and the difference in light between the two of them is absolutely insane. It's like, you know, massively different, not just a, a marginal comparison. So, so this is kind of a personnel door as you come in, uh, goes back out to the house. Um, and then so coming in here, so on your left, first thing, you've got a, a mortiser. It's probably not going to live there because it's not a very convenient spot for it, but I don't use it a huge amount now, um, so I'm not too fussed. I might just stick some real heavy-duty cast or something because it weighs an absolute ton. And now I can roll it in and out as you need to. It's not like it really needs good extraction anyway, and it's only on a 13-amp plug, so nice and easy to plug in anywhere you like. Um, we've got a diesel diesel heater on their side here um, and this this came with the building it's super convenient actually because you can see we've got this steel duct in that's running I don't know if you can just see along here and it goes all the way through into the end so this part of the building that you see here is going to be the machine shop um, and it's a, just under half of the building as a total so this is about a thousand square foot this room um, the whole building's about 2200 and just through here we're going to knock through an opening and that's going to become a spray booth. So there's a 600 square foot area around over there. It's going to be a spray booth and drying room. And this here, this duct goes to it. Um, and there's a fitting that we've got just down here that hooks onto this and goes, don't know if you can see up here, there's an opening and it blows you out and it does a fantastic job. It gets really warm in there. So what I'm hoping is that we'll be able to use that to force hot air in and help dry out the waterborne finishes that didn't dry as quick. Um, so that would be a real bonus, something that's already in, something I haven't got to pay for. I uh, need to get some more diesel for it. It's got like a 1200 litre diesel tank out the back. But I mean, red diesel, well, diesel's cheap at the minute. I don't know about red diesel. But, um, you know, so it's not going to be used all the time. Still going to try and get the wood burner in somewhere because it's just really good for getting rid of scrap. But otherwise, you have to chuck in a skip. So, you know, it's worth it, not just for the free heat, but just for the waste disposal, really. So we'll have to find out what we're going to do with that. Um, not really a good logical spot for it these buildings it's it's a strange combination this side over here you can see the brickwork is an old it's about 200 year old dairy stall um, and then this bit was extended on later when this agricultural engineers um, moved here in the early 70s so it's got a mixture of a traditional pan tiled roof and then a you know like a corrugating iron roof in places so it's not the best roof to come through with um, a flue set up nice and easy through concrete tiles but the pan tile's quite steep it's going to be a bit of a mess so we'll wait and see I might go out the wall and then go up the a bit like they have done with the flue for that I mean that flue's huge I don't know whoever engineered it it's like um, it's like the Eiffel Tower it goes up you know 25 foot above the top of the building so um, so yeah so that's coming in I'm going to get a little step back so you can see where we sort of are so we've come in we've got the heater there personnel door bandsaw I think that's probably going to stay there we haven't really decided exactly where all the machines are going to go but just kind of shuffling the things about so I needed to do a few bits and bobs uh, before this lockdown came in so it's kind of just temporarily plonked in place while we've got a few bits done but got the bandsaw there you know, it's got about three and a half meters in and out which is you know that's enough for most of the stuff I do it's not often I'm resawing anything much bigger than that and I do I mean I use it for the odd things I, I use it for making um, sort of bandsaw textured strips for making basket weave panels for the backs of cabinets and stuff like that but it tends to be that you, you normally sort of smaller maybe like 1.4 2.4 meters for like a really tall larder back or something but that tends to be done in two pieces anyway I normally put middle rail because it gets too too wappy otherwise so I don't need loads of in-feed and out-speed space for that, so I think that should be fine. Um, tenon is there. Tenon has got six metres before it hits anything, so we don't need to worry at all about that. I'm never going to be tenon in a rail longer than six metres. Um, coming around this way, we have sander and a planar thicknesser. You can see I've got a steel box section thing and it's going to get bolted to the floor to run a, an upright down, and then that'll have the extraction and the... Uh, and the sockets kind of wired through onto it. I don't, I'm not decided if I'm going to get an electrician to put some proper sockets in or maybe I'll just 
run the sort of command a socket cord on that over and uh, you know it's got fairly long sy lead on this machine so it probably reach over there anyway so might not bother but um that's there now the sander was supposed to be going um because we're hoping to have a new a new wide belt sander but given the current given the current situation and not really knowing when um you know i mean it's, you're working in people's houses i'm not too sure when things are going to pick back up again i thought it's probably prudent not to spend out unnecessarily until we know what's what's going on with it really um i did have my eye on a couple so it's a bit disappointing but you know keep going for a while and we can change it next year if things perk up or you know you never know if things come around quicker than you think then uh maybe it'll be sooner than you think but again three and a half meters in and out on the um on the sander and um, we've got about 4.8 in and 4.8 out on the planar thicknesser so again bigger and i'm likely to be using most of what i make is kitchens and cabinetry so i don't tend to be you know machining up four and a half five meter long stair strings and bits like that <laughs> occasionally once in a blue moon but again there's nothing that's so heavy that it can't be moved here so there's a wheel kit on the planar thicknesser and i can shuffle it and this is on wheels anyway um so you know if really needs to be i can always move it extractors over in the corner at the minute probably going to get changed it'll do for now i need to get all the ducting in um it's a bit of an awkward one for ducting really because it's going to end up having to be a lot lower than i really wanted it um just because the ceiling's got such a slope on it towards the back it's quite low at the back it's only about seven foot high back there and it's about sort of 12 13 foot at the middle here so um i don't really want to have big slope on the extraction because you tend to find I've done it before and you get like areas where there's dust settles in it so try and keep it fairly horizontal but there was all the ducting still needs to be sorted you can see we've got tons of it here now this is the stuff out of the last workshop now I was hoping to buy some shiny new stuff but again um, it's not really essential it just would look nice and uh, at the minute I can probably make do with what I've got and save a few quid plus it's a job I can do from home and you know, I was quite lucky that the, the workshop is, you know, my house is like 50 yards that way. So it's um, it's nice and convenient for doing stuff while we're not supposed to be out and about. Um, but it'll probably get changed. I've got some taller bags for this and I've also got some canister filters. I don't know where they are, um, but hopefully having a less restrictive outlet on it will um, mean that it gets a bit more airflow anyway, because those bags are in a horrendous state. They're well, well due changing. Um, there's a little stainless steel cabinet that come out uh, one of my granddad's butcher's shops. Uh, it's just handy for kind of glues and stuff. I did, used to have a heat pad in there for stopping the glue from getting too wet, but hopefully I won't need it now. I think it'd be quite warm, actually. It's uh, moved in. It was fairly cold the week we moved in, and I didn't have the heating on. It weren't too bad at all. Seems to get a good bit of thermal gain on the on the metal roof. You know, it feels quite warm when you put your hands. Actually, it's bat battened over. And then it's got like this, I don't know if you can see it or not. It's like a wire supported bitumenous felt and then steel over the top. But it's in good nick, you know, it's um, quite pleased with that. There's a bit of movement in some of the walls, I think, because there's some gigantic trees just out there which have got a bit of root penetration under the building, caused a few cracks, but we'll sort that out, put some heli coils in them, bits and bobs, you know, the heli bar or whatever you call it. So um, so I'm coming around front. One downside is the front shutter door is really small. So that's a bit of a bummer it would be nice if it had been bigger and taller i can see it being a problem getting the wide belt in high wise we might have to come up with some clever way of tilting it and then bring it back up i can get block and tackles on these running bars and i know the chap who's in there before had had four ton on them so um i could maybe potentially if i can get it on its side with the iab roll it in block and tackle on the top of it put it put it put it by the top eye that's until we get it back up right and then just have the same rigmarole when we get back out but um that's that's a possible option anyway so uh, but obviously it'd be nicer if we could have just rolled it straight in um, we've got router table just here don't use it a lot again it's a bit like the mortise at the time and i used it all the time but really now it, it gets used for the odd bits and bobs normally a bit bearing guided stuff um, so that's there over here we've got uh, some pallet racking that's a 10 foot by four foot six i think or 10 foot by four foot something pallet rack but uh basically that's been cut down i'm going to use it as an assembly bench and put sheet storage underneath it so the sheets go under there the slider from the panel saw can be shoop, slid across to here we can pour a sheet on and nice and easy you can get a jumbo sheet in there laid flat i did have vertical storage at the old workshop and it's fine but it's a pain in the ass to move things and it's uh you do still get a bit of warp unless you're really good at clamping everything up and keeping everything clamped flat 
you know, you're just more inclined to get more. But something's laid flat with full support and bearers underneath it, you know it's going to stay flat. And, you know, sometimes I tend to over-order on jobs for sheet materials just because I buy it in, like, larger quantities to get a bit of a discount. So I do tend to have quite a lot sort of kicking about. Um, so here we go. We've got a few bits to do. We've got bars to put up on the windows, security cages, obviously, they need doing. Um, we've got some security cage doors to go inside here as well. Uh, coming around here, got some clamp racks up. They're just kind of dotted everywhere. I think there's one over there, and we've got one over here as well. Just because if you have them in one spot, I always tend to find you can never, you never actually happen to be working where they are. So, um, so coming around this side, we have got panel saw. Got a few bits up on the wall, bit of screw storage. The main storeroom is through this door here, and we've also got a small office through here. But um, yeah, let's have a quick look. So, little office room through there, a bit of a store on the right here, which is quite handy for just keeping a bit of, you know, storage that's not going to get dust on it. Things like sills and that for windows, not that I do a lot now, but occasionally do, and they do tend to be dust traps, so they're sort of rubberized and it sticks. Um, so then that's what we've got oh, going on through there. Um, say so ducting's going to need to be chopped a lot, it's got to be a lot of joints in it because I'm reusing what I've got, so I'll probably get for about 800 rolls of tape and be cheaper to just buy the bloody ducting, really, but um, hey ho. So panel saw, a couple of little cheap roller cabinets, so just keep a bit of spindle tool in and bits and bobs in. Um, so we'll come around here, I've got what the old block and tackle was on was on this. I'm going to get a spring type extension lead and you can see just up here, this is on the old running gear. So when I'm sanding, I'm going to hopefully just be able to roll that above where I'm working. I don't know how well they really work to be honest, but at least you feel like you're doing, doing something. Um, always have extraction on the extraction on the actual, you know, sander itself anyway, but hand sanding and bits and bobs. Uh, coming round, we've got the uh, hospital bed work workbench, which is what I nicked the idea off of Johnny Ditchburn and Skip Ray did a hospital bed. And to be honest, that's a cracking bit of kit. Really good idea. If you don't follow John, as I've said it before, John Ditchburn, you should do because he's an incredibly talented cabinet maker. And uh, he does stuff a bit different to what you tend to see on, you know, on Instagram and stuff as well. It's not your usual slab cut river table type thing. It's, you know, proper woodworking really. So he's, um, he's you know, well worth a lot of watch if you enjoy a bit of woodworking. Um, over here got mitre saw, which gets used pretty much exclusively for cutting up firewood. Um, I do all my cross cutting on the panel saws to stop. Always have them. The only time that I really get used for anything other than firewood would be like if I've got a really big cornice profile uh, for a cabinet and you can't cut it upright. I like to tend to, tend to cut it upside down upright. Uh, but if you can't because it's too big, I might do like a compound mitre to get the right angle. I'd maybe use it then, but that would be about it really. Um, a little tiny filing cabinet here, which was my granddad's. Um, it's got an old bench grinder on top. And I don't really have any use for it, but after he died and my nan cleared out, I just couldn't really bed throw in the skip because I just remember spending so much time as a kid sorting through boxes of screws and now it's all got like little little dividers in it that he sort of made up in it sort of thing and I just kind of I just didn't want to chuck it away really so we got it off in it with some rubbish you, you tend to didn't you and then we've got uh, Craig Foreman and the Hoffman butterfly machine those are the wing extensions there for the Morso notcher the Morso notcher is currently just it I don't know where we're actually going to put that but it's going to be the thing that I just drop in in a space somewhere because it doesn't need dust extraction it doesn't need power um, so it's something that you can drop anywhere and it's not a pain in terms of ducting and stuff so we're going to get the rest of the machines in first and then we'll work out where that's going to go afterwards um, it might be that eventually at the minute as I said, this is split into more than one part. Half of the other side is going to be the spray booth. The front half at the moment, I'm using a storage. It's mainly timber storage, but it's also got a few other bits of rubbish in there, lawn mothers and, you know, that kind of thing. Um, it might be that eventually I knock through and this becomes like an L-shape, maybe sort of knock through somewhere around here, and this becomes like an L-shaped workshop. Um, and I wouldn't mind that becoming a bit more of a kind of cleaner area, so maybe hand tools and the notcher and glue up and assembly and the stuff where you're not making so much mess and try and keep the dust a bit more confined to in here. But 
who knows, could happen, might not. Um, so then after we've got them, we've got a couple of spindle molders there, the old SCM and uh, sort of like a generic Chinese cheap one, which are right. And then we're kind of back round to this door again, which I think kind of gets us all the way around the all the way around the workshop. Um, I say I do need to do a lot of work here still. I would have liked to have painted the walls, but I just wanted to get in for a start. And I know now I've put things in here, I won't do it, but you can kind of see that I mean, it's like where this was an engineers, they did like um, make parts for like combine harvesters and tractors and, and stuff like that. So it was mainly like precision engineering, they had milling machines and tons and tons of laves and stuff and you can see all the spatter from the cutting compound i just don't think emulsion is going to cover it and i don't really think i can be bothered to try and use thinners and get rid of it all and it's the same with the floor i was going to epoxy i've actually even got some epoxy flooring left but there's just no way it's going to take i don't know if you can see the layer of oil but i mean obviously all the ducting and stuff's been full of sawdust and as I've been moving it, it's been falling out. And every time I sweep it up, the, the sawdust comes up black. And my hope is, over time, all the sawdust that keeps getting swept up every night over the next couple of years will eventually soak up all of this oil in the floor. And, uh, you know, sort of give us a chance to either paint it or just give it a good clean down. But you can see where machines, like, you know, this is where a lathe, footprint of a lathe was. You can see the colour of the concrete underneath. And then you can see how oil it is over the, you know, next to it. But... Yeah, it's, it's one of those things, it's a, probably a big job and I just needed to get everything back up and running enough to be able to do some do some stuff. I mean, if I'd known that the lockdown was coming on, I probably might have just left all this in storage and spent the time doing it. But, you know, it's benefit of hindsight. I don't think anyone knows quite what's going to go on tomorrow today. So, um, yeah, that's pretty much where we're at with it. A bit more open space, same amount of tools and machines near us in the workshop, but a little bit more spread out i will take you around to the spray booth area quickly um say so the whole place is a renovation project so there's a lot of work for us to to do at various points but we'll go around there quickly now so i'll show you this uh the flue for this diesel burner i right, get the other side because the sun's in the way is insane i mean look at the engineering that's gone into that somebody's put some effort in so um so yeah that's there and then as we come around this corner here this is what is going to be the the spray booth this room is so let's find the right key for it obviously this has had nothing done to it yet so there's going to be pretty much everything to get sorted but you can see this point up here is where the duct comes through that heater and it really does chuck some heat through so that's pretty cool and um, this is how the lights were in the other main workshop originally we had these low hanging fluorescents which anyone who's had low hanging fluorescents and moved a sheet of ply knows that they're basically just uh you know sort of glass rain makers is what they are so say so this is a bit of be the booth probably gonna board up this window or brick up this window properly out that'll be there, booth there, and then what we'll probably do is get this side, they'll have sort of drying racks along it, and this will make quite a decent little spray space, hopefully, they're not massive, but at least it'll be separate to, separate to everywhere else, and let's have a quick scooch around here, it's a lovely day out, so nice bit of sunshine and blue skies, but um, so this is the other section which is currently being used as storage that potentially could become another bit of workshop. I did have a thought at the very beginning of maybe having it as a showroom because it's kind of big enough to get a couple of display kitchens in. Um, but I think I might end up wanting, uh, wanting the actual space. It is chocked with all the wood that I just can't bring myself to chuck away and just, you know, it's just stuff that you end up with. But... I got a lot of auction at various points and then you kind of keep it but say a nice tall ceiling height in here this room's got about sort of 13 40 foot ceilings um yeah and then you know kind of out onto the front drive so it's um all really just a case now of what's going on with things which is outside of my control and how much time and effort and kind of you know just general enthusiasm i can muster to do bits in the meantime which is within my control 
to a, you know, to a degree. But um, yeah, so that's pretty much where we're at. I know there's not a huge amount for people to see, but no one's doing an awful lot at the minute. So I know I've been watching more YouTube than you might normally do in the in the evenings, sort of thing. So it's um, yeah, I just thought you know it kind of gives you an update of where we're at, and then hopefully in the next couple of months as things get a bit bit more finished and a bit better we'll try and do the ducting next that's probably the next big thing i'd like to get out of the way is ducting once we've got that ducting done then um we can probably get a video of that put up there it's going to be a bit of a bit of a job because it's using so much of the old stuff so and uh yeah it's quite nice once it's got the roller shutter open on the front of the workshop that's kind of the view out the front of the workshop which is quite pleasant so yeah that's it everyone uh have a lovely whatever it is so it's bank holiday weekend in the uk i'm assuming it is everywhere else as well i don't know i think easter's the same everywhere is it or is it one of those ones where they have different weeks in different countries but either way whatever you're doing um have a good one. cheers bye